Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. Today we're going to talk about the allocation of parenting time and responsibility in the context of Illinois order of protection cases. An order of protection is basically a, it's almost like a restraining order. It's a, it's a court order requiring, uh, basically preventing abuse at the hands of a family or household member. The two things that you need in order to get an order of protection is abuse has to have occurred. The definition of abuse is very broad. The other thing is that the abuse has to have been at the hands of a family or household member. That definition is also very broad. So there's a wide range of remedies that's avail that are available for orders of protection. We've done a video on the different remedies, and there's a whole series of order of protection videos that we've done. So check that out at learn-about-law.com if you're curious. One of the remedies is the allocation of parenting time and responsibility. And this is basically what you think of when you think of custody and visitation rights. Illinois courts don't talk in those terms anymore. They talk about allocation of parenting time, which is when when is the father going to get to see the child? When is the mother going to get to see the child? And basically working out a schedule. And then allocation of parenting responsibility, uh, which comes down to making decisions in different areas of the child's life and who has that responsibility. Um, allocation of parenting time and responsibility, although it's a remedy that's available for orders of protection, is not available for emergency orders of protection because there's no notice or hearing. Uh, we have a video on the difference between emergency and plenary and interim orders of protection, so I won't go into too much detail about that. Um, just know that you can't get the permanent allocation of parenting time and responsibility in an emergency order of protection. It can only happen after the final hearing at the end of the order of protection case once the respondent has received notice and an opportunity to be heard. However, what you can get ordered in an emergency order of protection hearing is physical care and possession of the child, or you can have the court order that the respondent return the child to the petitioner. The difference is that physical care and possession of the child is a temporary band-aid uh, and is not supposed to be a long-term solution to parenting issues. It's just uh, basically trying to keep the child safe while the, uh, while the he until the hearing can be held for the order of protection. It's a very temporary thing. Allocation of parenting time and responsibility is a much more long-term plan for how uh, parenting is going to work for this child. And again, that can be only ordered at the final hearing while physical care and possession can be uh, ordered at the emergency order of protection hearing. So let's talk about how Illinois courts decide how to adjudicate or, uh, parental time responsibilities in order of protection cases. The rule of thumb is that it, basically the standard is the best interest of the child. So courts have wide discretion to take any actions they believe necessary for the best interest of the child and allocate parenting time and responsibility accordingly. If the respondent has committed abuse of the minor child, and again, the definition of abuse is very broad, uh, if the respondent's committed abuse, then there's a rebuttable presumption that arises that, uh, that parenting time and responsibility for the respondent is, a, is against the best interest of the child. The respondent can overcome this rebuttable presumption, but the burden is then on the respondent to show that they should get parenting time and responsibility and, and overcome that rebuttable presumption that they shouldn't. Um, let's talk about how uh, courts deal with restricted uh, parenting time and, and custody issues in order of protection hearings. Courts will restrict uh, a respondent's parenting time if the courts fi finds that, that the respondent is likely to do any of the following. Abuse or endanger the child, use parenting time to harass the petitioner, improperly conceal the child from the petitioner, or act in any other manner that's against the best interest of the child. We'll talk about what restricted and supervised parenting time is. Courts can place restrictions and other conditions on parenting time, such as specifying a particular location for dropping off the child uh, or explicitly requiring that the respondent not be intoxicated or under the influence of drugs during parenting time. It seems obvious, but when it's explicitly required, there's stiffer penalties if the respondent violates that restriction. So in the absence of a restriction saying when the child is going to be dropped off, courts will typically just kind of work out days and times um, that each parent is going to have parenting time, but restricted parenting time gets a little bit more specific. Um, courts can also order supervised parenting time. Often the parties will agree on a third party to supervise the parenting time. If they can't agree, then there are parenting centers that for a fee will 
uh, supervise the parenting time for you. So third party centers that will do that. Uh, the standard uh, that courts use to decide whether restricted or supervised parenting time is appropriate is whether unsupervised or unrestricted parenting time uh, will seriously endanger the child's physical, mental, moral, or emotional health. So if there's a danger to any of those things, um, then the courts are instructed to order supervised or restricted parenting time. And they can do all of this in order of protection hearings. So if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizurebusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.